Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to continue working on that midterm exam uh, web page challenge. So, basically, our ultimate goal is to make a web page kind of like this a little one page website with um, some graphics, headlines, filler text, more images, horizontal navigation, and basically a little footer area at the bottom. So, basically, a one column layout with a header and a footer. And this is where we left off at the end of the part one of this video. So, I've got the container set up and we've got the logo on the left side and we've got the headline group over on the right side probably do a little fine tuning uh, right at the very end but otherwise things are moving along pretty well and I think next on the agenda here I'm looking off my printed directions there's basically nine key callouts pointing to things and we've taken care of four I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the navigation menu that's kind of a multi-stepper it's two of the callouts on here so I'm gonna go ahead and work on that navigation menu so back on my editor of choice I do have a place already in the HTML for the nav, but you have to create the nav. And the navigation menu is going to use an unordered list. So I'll go ahead and put in a set of UL tags. And within that, I'll put in some list items. Each one, of course, is a hyperlink. And just for filler, I'll put in a pound sign. And of course, you can just look at the directions to see what they are. But there's home. And then I'm just going to duplicate this. There's one, two, three, four, there's six menu items. There's a home, about us, rooms, reservations, local weather, and directions. Okay, so there's a, about six menu items in there. That makes up my unordered list, which will make up my navigation menu. So in the directions, it says, the nav has a background color and top and bottom margins. The menu in the nav is made up of an unordered list. So we're getting that one pretty good. I just gotta do a little bit of style and formatting. And as a reminder, of course, this is what the finished navigation menu is gonna look like. It's gonna look like basically horizontally oriented text navigation with the uh, little underline on hover effect. So let's go ahead and tinker with this stuff. I'm going to back up to my styles and I'll go ahead and put in an area for nav and let me go ahead and put in a background color and I'll simply do uh, ABC it's a light bluish gray I didn't tell you a color on there I know the finished one has a light green but you wouldn't have been able to tell since I gave you a black and white picture to go off of instead of a color one I just say it has a background color you can decide which one and uh, Actually, let's see how things are looking. I'm kind of focused on my nav menu now. All right, so there's a typical navigation menu. And I see that my nav menu with this light blue background color, it's up still in that header area. Remember, I've got those floating objects and I don't want it to wrap. So I'll do a clear, I'll do clear both. And that'll get that nav menu below it. So I'm happy with that. Obviously, I can tell that headline group's gonna be made bigger later on and maybe this logo smaller. All right, so let's start working on this menu. And by the way, that takes care of one of my callouts. So I'll cross that off. And okay, so now I'm going to focus on this other callout about the nav. The list items in the nav are displayed side by side. The links have no underline, but underline shows on hover. Okay, so let's see. I will go ahead and do a nav unordered list list item. So descendant selector list items within the unordered list within nav. I'll go ahead and do a list style type none and I will go ahead and float these to the left to get them side by side and refresh okay they are now side by side looking good you'll notice that I kind of lost my background color there perfectly normal when you start to float things but I can go back to my nav and I can do a overflow hidden pop that back there we go and all right actually this is not too shabby let's go ahead and manipulate these anchor tags a little bit let's go ahead and work on these anchors nav unordered list list item anchors okay. and for these let's see they're supposed to be text decoration none I'll put a little padding on the uh, how about a little four five pixels on the top and bottom 15 pixels on the left and right is that a lot I don't know how are things looking 
Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I can I can dig that. So that's looking pretty good. Let me get that underline to show up on the hover, and we'll clean up things here at the end too. So if we want to make this look more centered, we can. Um, so let's see, back over to my editor, and I just need to do a little hover action. Nav, unordered list, list item A colon hover. And we'll do a text decoration underline. And I think while I'm here, I'm just going to increase my padding just a little bit. And uh, refresh. Oops, I am getting the underline, and I still didn't get that padding that I wanted. So my top and bottom padding is not working well there simply because my anchor tags are inline and I'm not making them into block elements. So no worries on that. What I will do though is I'll take this rule and I'll just stick it up here with my list items. Check this out. I'll save that. Head back over to the browser and refresh. And there we go. So maybe 10 is a little bit much. But actually, that doesn't look too shabby. So I'll go ahead and move on to the next thing. So I'm going to cross this off my list. That meets the uh, requirement and the, and the directions. And let's see. Next, I'm going to work on this. Uh, the sunroom image and the linked caption are contained within a box with a gray border. The box is on the right side with the text wrapping. So if I look at my finished example, basically, I'm going to get this going on over here. So I see that the sunroom graphic is over here on the right. My paragraph over here is on the left. Let's see how the HTML is looking. So there's this figure, and there's a space where the image is going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and add that image. Image source equals, and I provided the image. It's sunroom.jpg. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, JPG. That's right. I'll do alt equals the sunroom. All right, so there's my image, and it goes inside of the figure, and there's the fig caption below it. And I see that the figure occurs before the paragraph, so ultimately I'll want to do a float right. And I don't tell you to specifically use float right, but I do say the box is on the right side. So got that part taken care of, so let me head up to the styles. Figure, float right. And I'll go ahead and put a border on there. I'll do four picks solid, and uh, I'll do CCC for gray, pound sign, CCC. Let's see how that's looking. Oops, wrong one. That's the finished. Here's the example. All right, there we go. So the picture that I'm using is obviously a, a little bit bigger than the original graphic provided. So let me just go ahead and size that up a bit. I'm using a slightly different photo also. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to my, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it this way. I'm going to do figure width and uh, I'll do 400 px. and figure image. So the image inside of my figure, I'm going to go ahead and do a width of 95%. Take care of that. Text align center so I can center the image within the figure. Image is an inline element. Figure is a block element. So there we go. So that's a little bit smaller looking. Not too shabby. And if I want that container to stretch down, there's obviously I could uh, do a couple things, but that'll get fixed up with the footer. We can do a clear, or we can do the overflow hidden trick. So I'm not too concerned about it. But I do see that my text is centered. Things are looking pretty good. All right. I'm actually OK with that. So I want to put a little bit of extra space, though. There's some space on That's more of an aesthetic thing. It's nothing I asked you to do in the directions. But I'm going to go back up to this nav, and I'll do a, a margin bottom of 20 pixels little space there. Okay, so that takes care of the sunroom graphic. And then there's only two uh, callouts left on my directions. All right, so back over to the editor. And I'm going to start working on um, my address down here at the bottom. The text for the footer section is centered and displays the tree tiny image in between the address and phone number. Okay. So I've got the footer, and I do have an address for it. I'll go ahead and put in, I'll do this in a paragraph. There actually is an address tag, by the way. Um, I don't tend to use that very often. It doesn't have any separate formatting, but it is kind of fitting. Ah, what the hell? Let's try it. Paragraph would have been perfectly fine, though, by the way. All 
Oops, I have this misspelled, don't I? Yeah, let me fix that up. So I don't have much occasion to use the address tag. But we'll try it. So let's see, one, two, three, four, um, street name. Then there's also an image in here. Now, I provided a separate tiny tree image for the test, but I'm just gonna use the same image that I had before. Image source equals tree.png. This is gonna be too big, so I'll certainly have to size that. Um, alt equals, I'll just do an empty set since it's not a functional, uh, functional image at all, just an empty alt. That's pretty good. And then we have the address, bc v 7 t 2 g 5 Vancouver. I just want to repeat this image again, so I'll just do a little copy and paste. There we go. And then a phone number, 333-555-1234. All right, so it takes care of that. Now I know this is going to be kind of messy looking if I just go to check it out now, so always be prepared. It's the middle of the surgery, you know. Refresh. And uh, yeah, there we go. So I've got, uh, where's the first part of my address? Oh, first part of my address is up there. So we're going to take care of this. So there's a address tree, address tree. And remember the finished look is going to look kind of like this down here where everything's nice and lined up. Okay, so let's take care of that. So I'll jump over to my, uh, or scroll up to my CSS. Footer. And I don't necessarily need a lot of fancy rules here, but I will go ahead and do a clear both. I could do a clear right or something like that. And just that little action right there, there we go. That'll get things below that floating image, you know, we'll clear a floating image, clear a floating object, I mean. All right, so let's, uh, it's not too shabby. Let's get those trees a little bit tinier, make it easier to work with footer image, image inside of the footer, and I'll go ahead and set the width on those to um, something small, so maybe just 100 pixels. Let's see what that does for us. Oh yeah, much tinier. Probably a little bit bigger than what's in my pictured example, but uh, actually I think that looks pretty good. Maybe just a wee bit smaller. 80. There we go. It's not too shabby. And I do want to get all this centered, and that's pretty easy too. I could actually probably do that right up here. Let's check this out. If I just do a text align center, there we go. So that'll center all that content. Could have centered with the address tag also. And maybe add a little bit more spa spacing. I don't know if I do a little padding top, um, 20 pixels. See how that looks? A little more space. Okay, um, that looks perfectly fine. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that off of the list. And the last call out on here, which really doesn't require much effort on our parts, is the font used for the paragraph text, which is back up here. The font used is a little bit larger than normal, and the first two words are bold. And I've actually already got that bold, so I think I um, had that task part taken care of for you. But I could actually go fix that up a little bit with my, just make the font a little bit bigger. So if I look at the editor and I see that paragraph of text, I already have a set of P tags in here, so I just added those in. Um, so basically it's the paragraph that's in the main section. It's the only paragraph I really have now too, since I used an address tag down here to mark up this address. So I could just format this paragraph and hell, I could just take care of it right here with an inline style. Style equals font size 100 and, uh, 10%, so just a little bit bigger than normal, and refresh, and so now it's a little bit bigger, and the first two words are already bold, and that is not too shabby, and technically that crosses off everything, and and that was the bulk of the test right there, so you could have you know, turned this in and, and done quite well uh, in the grade. Now, for five points out of the 45 points possible, it was basically for full credit, in addition to the mechanics of the individual skills, your page must very closely match the look and layout of the sample page. So I just want to take a couple quick minutes here, and definitely this headline uh, and image can be resized, one a little bit bigger, one a little bit smaller, and I'll try to center up this uh, navigation menu here real quick. But otherwise, we are as pretty close to being finished. So let me go ahead and take a couple quick minutes here. And let's make these headlines a little bit larger. So back up on the CSS. 
And there we go. Ooh, let me just go ahead and make my logo a little bit smaller too. I'll do logo, just make that a little bit smaller. Let's get these headlines a little bit bigger. So that's in my H group. And I'm gonna go ahead and make the uh, H1. I'll do font size. Let's, let's just a little trial and error here. 60 pixels and H2 font size 40 pixels. Could also use percentages. Um, here we go. That's a little bit bigger, uh, so that's not too shabby. I'm make that logo a little bit smaller. That background size. So what if I knock that down to like 25 percent? There we go. That looks pretty good and finished example very very similar in fact i like the placement in this version a little bit better than here so it's not as centered and stuff so yeah i'm actually pretty happy with that knock down that logo one more that logo's size is bothering me a little bit so i'm gonna do 150 on that one logo's a little bit smaller and uh we get a little space on that nav a little more space up there so we could work on that but let's see i'll just go ahead and uh got my h group a little padding on the bottom there Padding bottom, I don't know, 20 pixels, 10 pixels, just guess. Oh, and that kind of moved, actually moved the tree down in an attractive way. I think I'll stick with that. Yeah, but really I should probably just put some margin or padding on my header itself, which contains all these items. So I'll just jump over here, and of course, remember everything on my, you know, my image and stuff, that's all contained within that header tag. So I'll just find a little spot. I don't think I have a rule for the header. So it doesn't really matter where I stick it. Uh, I'll put it right here, I guess. So there's my header, and I'll just do a little padding bottom of 20 pixels. Well, let's see. I'll, oh, I need to do a overflow hidden. There we go. Because I've got those floating elements in there. If you put a border on it, then it would have really stood out to you. Okay, and let's go ahead and center up this unordered list. Uh, if I jump over to my unordered list, I don't have a rule for my unordered list, so let's let me show you this. Yeah, I have unordered list, border one pix solid red, and let me go and do overflow hidden. Not necessary, just makes the visual a little bit easier. And Oh, I got a typo. One space. All right, so we can see my unordered list is a little bit wide here. I could knock that down. I could set its width to be um, about 700 px. I'll do a little trial and error here. Actually, it looks pretty good. Maybe about 680. And 650. And while I'm here, actually, I'll test that out. Oops, a little bit too narrow. I'll go 660. And I will also go ahead and do uh, margin 0 px auto, which is very similar to how I centered the um, the actual container. And let me knock this up a little bit, 670. There we go, and let's get rid of that border. Okay, so that looks not too shabby, I think. So we've got our web page here. And by the way, there's the uh, underline on hover effect. There's the finished example. Same basic look and layout, a few spacing differences, but nothing to be too concerned about. So that is the web page created for the midterm exam. Take care.